I would leave it there, Kathy. Oh, but maybe. Okay, now we'll start getting into the next part of our program. So I hope you have all enjoyed some friendly conversation along with your lunch. Our Heavenly Hospitality ladies have done a superb job of lunch today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Heavenly Hospitality. <laughs> Thank you, I was going to ask for an applause, but that tells you how good the meal was, right? And um, so please feel free to help yourself to refreshments during our special memory segment. And I would also, again, like to express a big thank you to Brian Sampson. Is he hiding? Brian, are you hiding or are you out here eating? Where's Brian? Oh, he's eating in the back. So Brian, if you could step out for a minute and so we can give you a big thank you for all of the live streaming that we've had and your video. <laughs> So, um, Ian was a librarian before he ventured into his calling as a minister and his ordination in 2007. And I think that's taken him very well into his, his life and, and helping us all along and definitely for some great conversation and, um, that I've had with Ian in the past. And I recall eight years ago our excitement in welcoming Ian into our ministry. Our hearts were open to embarking on a new journey with him as our spiritual leader. I have had the pleasure of working with Ian on our church council for the last eight years. Ian was quick to venture out into our community, connecting with other United Church ministers in Edmonton, as well as other denominations and community organizations. And during this time, he met Kim at Southminster Steinhauer, and five years ago, they were married. And that was a very special and momentous occasion for all of us. And Kim, we have truly enjoyed having you in our church family. So when Ian joined our congregation, we were managing with financial struggles and looking to new ways to grow like many other congregations. Well, along came a few distractions, namely Trump <laughs> and COVID. <laughs> and Ian, I'm sure you never imagined that that would be taking, you know, the last the distractions the last few years that you've had with us. They've been very exciting in many, many different ways. I would like to thank you, Ian, very much for how you have embraced us here at Millwoods United. You saw the value in our community outreach and participated in the food bank distribution, helping at the bread run, greeting people at our craft fairs. You were engaged with um, and supported the Edmonton Greater Alliance, the, the Pride Parades, Truth and Reconciliation, outreach services in se at several community senior centers. You've led us in many interesting Bible studies and even supported in leading ones that I wanted, a couple of book studies that were a little bit, you know, off the beaten path. Totally appreciate that. And I'm really going to miss conversations with you. And it's time to hear from a few other people. And so first I'd like to invite Kathy Bailey up to um, share some memories. <clears throat> and there, there is a list of people on your program, but we've changed it a little bit. So I'm just going to call people up as as um, we have it planned for, so. I guess it wouldn't be one of these events if I didn't come up and say a few words, but I'll make it really short and really quick because there's lots of other really good people that want to share some good messages. I'm going to go public with a little story that Ian and I always had a chuckle over each Advent season. <laughs> He's nodding his head. The first Advent, I um, was helping to decorate the church, and I showed him the big boxes of the nativity scene and the creche that we always put out to decorate the church with over Advent. And we start off by putting... Um, 
the creche up and we then move on to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise men. And I, like a newbie, I just put baby Jesus right out there. And baby Jesus was in the, the uh, manger. And um, it was out for display. And Ian, Ian came over to me and said something like, no, 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 baby Jesus can't be out there. Not until Christmas Eve. So, okay. I'm just the worship person, you know. I'm just doing the decoration. And so, lo and behold, for years and years after that, when we would put out the nativity scene, baby Jesus was never there until Christmas Eve. You know where baby Jesus was until Christmas Eve? Baby Jesus was in the mailbox in the workroom. <laughs> so I just wish all good things for you, Ian, and Kim, to put up with him for the next while. <laughs> I told Ian, I've told Ian, I think every single time I've come in in the last couple of months, which I usually come in about once a week, and we have our little, commis we commiserate, and I've said to Ian, you gotta have a plan. You gotta have a plan. So I hope he has a plan. <laughs> I can't be there anymore to check up. Sorry, but all the best. <laughs> and Kathy Crawford. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming today. It is at this point I might make you aware my father was a minister, and he would go on at length. So now that I have the pulpit, <laughs> I'll try to only be a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm a choir member, and I've been a choir member on and off for, I'm going to say guess, I'm going to guess because I can't remember. Oh, I'm going to say eight years. Uh, I have been coming to the church on and off over the decades. Uh, one, you know, it's been really tough over the last couple of years with the virus and everything. And we, uh, so the services were <laughs> adjusted. You know, we tried new things and the live streaming really came on and helped present our service to many people. So it is greatly appreciated. But of course, uh, you have to come early. That's a fault of mine. Uh, I'm pretty much always the last one. And I, I attribute that to my many years of shift work. But uh, I come in and we would always uh, try to rehearse and get started. And of course, you start and the, the microphones are not live. And, uh, and then just before we get going for real, the microphones come on and Brian will, you know, get you to test them. And uh, of course, I get very nervous. And my most unfond memory is, you know, we were, we were singing and it was during the service where I said a very bad word into the microphone. I messed up. I messed up and I said one of those four letter words. And, you know, so then I, I caught myself and I realized, well, don't say it again. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I was deeply embarrassed and I hope nobody noticed. So if you really have to look back and think back and go through the services to find it, good luck. I'm, it was way back there. It was way back there. But uh, it was a lot of fun as a choir person singing at the services and uh, being a cantor. And, you know, singing brings us a great deal of joy. Uh, and I'm sure it brings many of you a great deal of joy. My husband doesn't like to sing. Uh, he likes to play the radio. And he can't carry a tune. And I've often tried to get him to sing. But nevertheless, the choir sings very well. Uh, there's not a lot of us, and Brian Legro will say our choir is small but mighty, and it, our spirit is mighty. Ian, your spirit is mighty, and I'm deeply saddened that Ian can't come back and sing with us in the coming year. But as we are all members of this family, you know you can come back anytime after that, and you are welcome. 
and we look forward to singing with you again. Um, there, I, I know there have been a lot of challenges uh, over these last few years, personally, professionally, and as a church family. Uh, but we have inspired each other, and we continue to inspire each other. I hope these experiences have inspired you, and it inspired all of you, and they have inspired me. And sometimes, like today, you come in and you're full of beans, and you just can't sit down. That's a good thing. And we all have to channel ourselves to put that energy into a place where it belongs. So, you know, damn it, we try, and sometimes it just doesn't work. That is how life goes. And if any of you are golfers or curlers, baseball players, whatever, you know, pick a ball. It doesn't always do what you want it to do. The trick is to keep trying. So hang in there. There are great days ahead, virus or no virus. Uh, so in, I guess I'm finishing up, huh. wanted to wish you well. And thank you for your service. And thank you for being in the choir. And through the choir, helping us all to learn how to be better. Uh, better in our singing and being better people. I hope you continue to find joy through music. And I hope you continue to travel and have wonderful experiences. And Kim, thank you for your service <laughs> in joining with Ian. And we recognize your service as well. Thank you for being here. Thank you both. Thank you all for coming today. God bless. Yes, I've often wondered if being a, if a prerequisite to being a minister was having a good singing voice because it seems to work so well and we've really enjoyed yours through the years for sure. So our next speaker is Reverend Tasby. And Reverend Tasby was a person that Ian met, and I don't know exactly how you met, but I know that Ian, Ian introduced us to Reverend Tasby many years ago, and they are the Zimb our Zimbabwe Methodist United Church um, that come in and for years were, would have their service after our service here, but through COVID they haven't been here and we've missed you guys very much, so it's wonderful to have you come and be with us today. Good afternoon to you all. Yeah, I'm waiting for a response. <laughs> God is good. And all the time. For real, God is good. Reverend Ian, happy retirement to you. It is not easy. I was told since when I was young Meeting a person was not a problem, but to say goodbye, I was told, and up to now, I understand it's difficult to say goodbye, but it's necessary for you to have time to rest. We know this is retirement. It doesn't mean you are tired to be connected to God. You are retired to effective ministry, but you are not tired to pray. You are not tired to reflect and inspire young generation to love God and to serve God. I wrote here, I promised that I, I'm going to just write something so that I don't skip what I want to say. The Zimbabwe United Methodist Edmonton Society will always remember you in person. You were a fatherly figure. You helped Millwood's United Church, the congregation you have been leading. You have been pastoring through its board and the meetings held to make a decision to open doors to a migrant society who had no place
to core worship place. During your tenure as a minister here, during your retirement time, we want you to know that the Zimbabwean United Methodist Congregation at Mills, because we call this our home, will forever remember you and the whole congregation. You saw a congregation of immigrants who had no place for worship and the Millwoods United Church opened doors. What can we say? As I'm giving my last statements, I ask all members of the United Methodist Edmonton Local to just come up. We want to thank God for Reverend Ian for what he has done. As I'm concluding, I want you to come. During your retirement time, when you, are re when you are in your retirement time and in your days, be filled with blessings of good health and a loving family. We, we are happy for you, Kim. We are happy to see you being uh, always a helpmate, a good wife. We once came to your house as a family we remember all those. May God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Ian, for allowing God to touch the hearts of many people through you. Thank you for that. These are just representatives. Majority of our members didn't make it, but these are going to represent uh, the United Methodist uh, Edmonton Local yeah, I understand Lloyd is here. He's the first Zimbabwean you saw. And from the discussions that there is a congregation looking for somewhere through intercultural ministry, you did what you did and Mills United Church. We just want to say, Tino Tenda Jesu, we thank the Lord for blessing us, for having you and the whole congregation. So I'm going to be the chorister here today. I know, guys, I'm not good at that. <laughs> but because it's Reverend Ian's retirement. Tino tenda Jesu Tino tenda Jesu Tino tenda Jesu Hallelujah Amen Thank you Jesus Amen Thank you Jesus Amen Thank you Jesus Amen Hallelujah Amen And culturally we don't end it without saying oh, Munya, our lay leader, is going to present a gift representing the United Methodist Edmonton Local to Reverend Ian and Kim. And I uh, have our family envelope as well, a gift we want to present. Thank you.
thanks to Ian's connection with Reverend Tasby, we've had the, the honor a few times of having them um, join us in our services on a, the odd couple of Sunday mornings and thoroughly enjoying their music. It is so fun. <laughs> it's great to have different um, churches work together and share together. So thank you very much. So our next speaker is Len Penner. If you'd like to come forward, Len is, Len is our congregational guitarist. So he's always here on Sunday. Um, yeah, you can depend on Len to be playing the guitar in the background. So. Well, good afternoon. Um, I was asked to um, offer uh, uh, congratulations to Ian on, on the part of the choir and, and say a few things. So uh, to a lot of you, when you come here, you may think that the choir is a dedicated bunch, uh, you know, disciplined, dedicated. Well, most of us have a, a secondary, if not primary, reason for being here uh, on Wednesday night to practice, and that's the um, sort of the camaraderie and uh, fellowship, if you will. And uh, much to the chagrin of about three or four choir directors that I can remember, we like to chat, we like to offer our opinions about the music, we like to sometimes say, I think we've milked this one for all it's worth, you know, it's time to move on, you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. And so when, when Ian showed up, we we're kind of wondering now, how's Ian going to fit in? Well, I, I dare say he fit right in. Uh, and I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that he had a good time all the time. The other thing I'd like to say about Ian was I was very happy to see him because um, uh, unlike myself, he has a great vocal range and he studied music, uh, conservatory piano for many years and a very good note reader. So some of us in the bass section, I mean, it takes us till about six in the evening to, to hit a middle C if, if ever. And Ian covered us on those high parts. It was great. He had a very prominent voice. And uh, as I learned long ago, you know, I, I, I have a tuba kind of a voice. So the idea is that if you have a high note that you can't reach, you don't grimace with facial expressions and con body contortions. You just smile and wiggle your lips. So I, I used to situate myself quite close to Ian. I, very, very good that way. Um, on the, uh, on the musical side, um, Ian uh, introduced us, or at least myself, probably other people to old standards, favorites of his, obviously, from the, the big red hymn book that we use. And some of us are from uh, other traditions. Mine would have been the sort of Germanic uh, Baptist, Southern Baptist, you know, kind of uh, song books. And, and so I learned a lot of songs that were, you know, hidden in plain sight in the, in the red book. So I, I was always grateful for that. Um, and um, well, beyond that, I really don't have too much to say other than um, Kim, if you, as they always say, find yourself with twice as much husband and half as much money, you might recommend to Ian that he join a congregation with a choir that he's welcome to, to come back to. Thanks a lot, Ian, and congratulations. So our next speaker is A.J. Januski coming up. And one of the things I marvel with Ian is his memory, because uh, especially during COVID as congregational care chair, and he has an exceptional memory for people's names. He remembers your name, your spouse's name, your family's name, always amazed me. And thanks. Hey, so I just wanted to say a couple things about Ian. Uh, so eight years, that's a lot. <laughs> um, I started transitioning when Ian started get, becoming a minister here. And so I got to you know, talk to him about that and he was very accepting. He did pride parades with us, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, you know, show the pride of our church kind of thing. Uh, I also wanted to thank him. I uh, spent some time in the psych ward last, I think it was two years ago. And uh, he came and saw me and I just, you know, wanted to really say thank you for being there for me and, you know, talking to me and getting me through it. Uh, and also uh, confirmation. My sister and I, Rosa, we got to do confirmation with Ian. That was amazing. Uh, very thankful that I got to do that here in this church, our family church. Um, but I had a little joke about Ian, because <laughs> you got to put that in there. So a couple years ago, this is quite a few years ago, uh, we had a Ray Spoon concert. Ray Spoon is a transgender um, musician that we had here. And uh, so we were getting ready for the concert. You know, everything's going great. People are getting here. 
And Ian's like, oh yeah, things are good, but I have a question for you. And I was thinking, oh God, something's wrong or whatever. He's like, do I look okay? <laughs> so yeah, I just, it's my favorite thing about Ian. I'll probably remember that for the rest of my life. Um, but yeah, thank you, Ian, for being here and, uh, you know, blessings. Thank you. I got a phone call asking me if I would share a memory with Ian. I says, I don't have any. I've only been a member of this church, uh, what well, was a year ago, December, I, I started attending. Uh, but I says, I do have something I can offer. Uh, we were singing Deep Waters earlier today. Well, I have gone before you into the deep water of retirement. Um, I retired uh, in 2011. I liked it so much I retired again in 2014. <laughs> and then finally in 2019. And I'll probably retire again before it's all over. Uh, but it, it's good. Uh, so I, I guess my word would be welcome to retirement, how, whatever that looks like for you. You talked earlier today about the church going into a time of transition. Keep us in your prayers. And you're going into a time of transition. Your life will be different. Give yourself some grace and some time in that transition. Uh, and also remember what brings meaning, worth, and value to your life. You've been a minister here for eight years. You got called into ministry. That has brought you much meaning, worth, and value. And that call does not necessarily stop as you retire. So being a good pastor, I'll end with a poem. I'm old, so I need glasses. The Bridge Builder by Will Allen Drumgool. An old man going a lone highway came at the evening, cold and gray, to a chasm vast and deep and wide, through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fear for him, but he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You cross the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at evening tide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I have come, he said, there followed after me, there goes my king, there followed after me today, a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that has been as not for me to that fair-haired youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I am building this bridge for him. Ian, may you find things that challenge you in your transition as you continue to minister. Okay, so um, is there anyone else that would like to come up, have something to share, just kind of thought of something that you'd like to share with us? open floor for a few minutes here so well we do have another presentation coming up and as they're getting ready um, they're... you want to talk I don't know <laughs> Brian is up here a lot on Sunday mornings too Fifty-two weeks, eight years, that's nearly 500 Sundays. Ian and I have been together for most of them. Mind you, only two hours a Sunday, but 
We started off with uh, the iPhone as our camera. And then pandemic came. And I had to train Ian to talk to the camera because there was nobody else here. <laughs> and we had spotlights donated to us. So we had to reposition to a, so we all looked good. But it still is hard when there's only three people in the church. We then got a new camera. We were able to increase the fiber optics so that we now are able to use more than my fancy camera on the wall there. So we now could live stream instead of record. Most of, the, most of those eight years, I would record, take it home, edit it, and Ian would then mount it on Facebook and then later on YouTube. Once we got the new camera, we could go live direct. Ian still mounted it to YouTube, so now I have to learn how to do that now. The best thing of the five years, or the eight years, and in most recently the last two years, is the cubbyhole. Ian's very particular, and if it doesn't start on time, he comes running in and sticks his head in. If we're having trouble with FaceTime, Kim is on, online watching, and if there's a problem there, she waves to Kim, Ian, and he comes running in again, and what's going on? But I will admit that when there has been problems and we haven't been able to immediately settle them, he just bounces back. I mean, it's just on we go, keep on trugging, we'll fix it or we won't fix it. But it's been great 500 years or 500, well, it's been something like that. <laughs> Some days when it's not working, it seems like 500 years, but it's been a great eight years. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to come up and speak? Are you coming, Val? Yeah. <laughs> I've listened to everything that everybody's had to say, and I'm not here that often, and I try to keep in touch. Uh, buddy, and I'm really <laughs> sorry that I'm choking up here. I'm going to miss you. Um, I wish you the best in everything you're going to do, Kim, and I know you'll be a great helpmate to him, along with your family and stuff like that. So you take care of yourself, and uh, God bless. Okay, uh, is there anyone else that would like to come up? Okay, if not, then I'll invite our next star. Uh, Ethel Ray, if you would like to come up and speak a few words. Ian, you should look this way. No, no, look. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> it's, time, it's time to get instructions, not give instructions. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Ethel and Sherry and the entire congregation, all who've spoken, all who are here today. I don't really know what to say more, except um, it's been such a blessing to be here, to, you know, the whole time in ministry, almost 10 years, but the, or 11 years, but the last eight and a third years here, it's been such a deep honor and privilege to get to know each of you, to know this community, to try to speak a word of God and to be a pastor and to do the work of ministry. It's been a true joy and a true pleasure. Thank you so much. And I, I also wanted to extend my heartfelt gratitude to this congregation that when I first came here in August of 2015, I had barely just started dating Ian, and I came and uh, I, you know, I just felt so welcomed, and, um, and I have ever since, and uh, I know that I have a, a, another congregation that I'm treasurer of, and I've tried to, you know, have both feet in, uh, you know, one foot in one and one foot in the other, and it's, it's been a challenge at times, but especially in the last year since uh, the services were returned back in person and we could sing together in community, and that is church to me, and so that's been such a blessing in my life to be able to do that. Yeah. And just to support Ian and just to be present to um, his love of the world and in spite of some of the craziness that happens, Ian always comes back to love and that's what I really value about him. And before we started dating seven years ago, um, I was lurking on social media and I came across the eulogy that Ian read today. And I went, oh my gosh, I really have to know this person because I fell in love with him. And this morning when he was telling me that he was going to be talking about the same eulogy, I said to him, oh, I get to fall in love with you all over again. <laughs> Anyway, we had a lot of fun this morning just thinking about this day and the meaning, and I'm grateful that, um, and I, sa I said thank you, Ian, for being privy to the life of a minister because it's been interesting, to say the least, and challenging as well, but it has enriched my life greatly, enriched my life to have this congregation and um, yeah, I will miss everybody too. And I haven't even paid any attention to that because I just don't want to feel my heart hurting too much. But um, uh, we will see each other around. And um, I look forward to, to Ian having the space to really sink into um, whatever tickles his fancy. I heard piano might be part of it. So it's kind of fun to have uh, some music in the house like that. I. I hope, because he used to play piano when he was younger, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, if you think that any act is hard to follow, I get to close this meeting out. Um, I, I had some things written, but everybody here has said such wonderful things and has really brought out what we all think of Ian and how much we really love him. And so, Ian, I was going to just remind you that you brought out the music in so many people, and, and that's your gift, and I want you to continue doing that. So you're not really retiring, you're really kind of like moving forward in making sure you bring out everybody's music, and I'm sure you will. Um, and then the other thing is I, I have to thank you for bringing Millwood United Church to my family. When my, my grandson had the brain tumor and you went to visit him, just out of the blue, it just, it meant so much to us. And we thank you for that, and I know every one of us has a moment like that with Ian. 
where he just popped in and, and made it so possible for you. So I just want to thank everyone for saying such wonderful things about Ian because you so deserve so many. And Kim, thank you for raising such a lovely husband. <laughs> I think. Um, so just thank you again, Ian. We're going to miss you. You may find people stalking you. I know I'm going to be one. Um, so feel free stalking. He's, he's open to it, I think, maybe. Um, and uh, the other thing is, if anybody has never read the book, um, oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. That book reminds me of Ian so much. It's like you've got brains in your head and feet in your shoes and move on. And that's Ian. He's so much like that. It doesn't just a molecule of possibility. And he brings it to life. Oops, sorry. He brings it to full life for everybody. And um, thank you, Ian, for that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. And if you want to sign the back of the quilt, is that my instruction? Yeah. Oh, and thank you. Oh, thank you for everybody that came up and talked. And the Stitching Connection ladies. Wow. That's an incredible quilt. That truly is. Am I missing? If I'm missing anybody, it's not because I forgot about you. It's just that so many people have given so much that I just want to thank every one of you for being here because you mean something to each and every one of us. So thank you again, and thank you so much for coming out. <laughs>